Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Cami Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill and today I'm going to show you how I made this St. Patrick's Day tumbler with a full water slide wrap, foils, glitter, and heat transfer vinyl, also known as HTV. Yes, I did say HTV and I first saw it applied to a tumbler from my girl Kathy Johnson with the Rustic Pixie and I thought that it was an amazing idea because HTV is easier to get lined up and put in place than traditional adhesive vinyl. So thank you so much Kathy and I've linked her channel below so you guys can check her out. As always, all of the products I used will be listed in the description below and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this design, I started with a fully prepped and sanded 30 ounce straight skinny from Paris Tumblers. I spray painted it with Modern Mint from Rust-Oleum 2X Primer and Paint Spray Paint. Let that dry for about two hours. And then I was working on several cups. So I actually mixed up 60 milliliters of Artistry's two to one fast set epoxy. But here I'm applying probably between one to two milliliters of epoxy over the entire surface of the cup. And and I'm making sure to take my time and get the epoxy smooth and evenly like coated as evenly as possible so that you don't have any inconsistencies with your glitter coverage. So here I'm really showing you how long I take to apply the epoxy just to make sure that it's great and evenly coated. I let that sit for about five minutes and then I move into applying my glitter. Here I am using Cactus Flower from Bougie Glitter Boutique and I have to say that this is probably one of my favorite mixes from Bougie. I have used it on so many cups and it just, the sparkle is amazing. It has multiple cuts and just like so many facets to it that run and go buy this glitter because it's absolutely beautiful. But I'm just making sure that I've got really great coverage over the entire surface of the cup because with this design, you will see any like missing spots or anything like that. So you wanna make sure that it's super nice and coated. After I was happy with the glitter coverage, I just take the cup and I roll it across my cardstock to make sure that all the pokey bits are nice and laid down and then I move into the next steps. I did let this cup sit for about two hours, then I spray sealed it with Rust-Oleum clear gloss spray paint and let that dry for about 45 minutes to an hour and then I am mixing up my Artistry Epoxy for the first coats after the glitter application. I'm mixing up 60 milliliters of Artistry's regular epoxy. Um, I'm using the regular because I am gonna let these cups dry overnight, so I didn't need a fast set. But I'm using my boat prop mixer from Cami Page Boutique, and I love this thing because it reduces the amount of time that you need to mix up your epoxy, and look how freaking clear it is. It reduces bubbles, and it makes sure that you have nice and consistently mixed up epoxy, so you don't have any of those sticky cups that nobody wants. I am applying 30 milliliters of epoxy over the entire surface of the cup, and this cup did need two coats of epoxy before I moved into sanding. And the reason why I always do two is because you wanna make sure that you have enough epoxy on the cup that prevents you from getting down into your beautiful glitter and causing any kind of either like the color coming off or rough spots on your cup. So. I typically like to do two coats of epoxy. If you are using a thicker viscosity epoxy, you probably can get rid of um, or get away with one, but I just, I don't know, I guess I'm a scaredy cat and I always like to use two. And it also, I have found, leaves you with a nice, a lot smoother surface when you are working with some of these chunkier cuts of glitter. So I let the first coat of epoxy dry for about 12 hours, or actually it was probably closer to like 16 hours because I didn't get to it until the following afternoon. But then I did go in with Artistry's two to one epoxy, um, which is a fast set just to get another coat on there. But I wanted to call that out because I, you can use different epoxies on the same cup. I don't ever want you guys to think that you have to stick with one type or one brand, but that's what I did. And then the second coat I let dry for about six hours before moving into our water slide. 
I will link the uh, graphic or the design um, to Creative Fabrica for these stripes, but I thought it was just absolutely perfect um, for the water slide to have this kind of watercolor striped effect with the different glitters. So I cut these out or I printed them out on Hippo water slide paper and I sealed it three times with, um, with Krylon triple thick, letting each layer of the spray paint dry for a good 20, 30 minutes before going into the next layer. I know this seems time consuming, but I promise it makes it so much better when you go in to apply your water slide because you have a more workable material that isn't just gonna crinkle up on you. So I put the water slide into a cookie sheet with warm water and what I did is I put the water slide in and then let it, it just like kind of shrivels up really fast. It rolls in on itself. But when it starts to kind of unveil, I like to say a little bit, I just flattened the sheet out. Then I applied it to the cup with a backing on it. And as I rotated the cup, I just slid off the back of the back, like of the backing of the water slide. Then what I'm doing here, I just come in with my silicone silicone brush, smooth out the entire surface, and then just come in with my craft knife or my X-Acto knife and trimmed up any of the excess of the water slide. Now I do this because I want it to lay as smoothly as possible and prevent any of the water slide from kind of like crinkling up on itself or getting any wrinkles because it's going to show with the later design elements. So just use your silicone brush, apply more water as needed, and just go move around the cup. I let the water side dry for about an hour and I went into a coat of epoxy. I needed about 20 milliliters, but then it was time to apply the foil. So this foil is from Artistic Painting Studio and I will link the foil that you see here in the description below so you can grab it. But what I'm doing is I'm coming in with the specific foil adhesive and going over one of the thicker gold stripes. So you can see here, it's just like maybe a half inch wide, probably three quarters of an inch wide. And I'm just coming in with the adhesive and going over that gold stripe. So you don't have to worry about the adhesive being super smooth. I mean, you do want to try and get it as even as possible. I just could not do it for the life of me. But I'm just kind of roughly applying the, um, the adhesive, not the glitter, around that gold stripe. And then I'm coming in with my heat gun after I have it all applied. And I'm making sure to heat up the glue to where it starts clear. Now, I don't... That's what I did. I don't think I recommend doing that because what happened was is it heated up some or most of the epoxy on the cup and then I had the foil sticking in a couple places that I didn't want it. I ended up liking that look, but if you wanted the adhesive and the foil to be specifically where you applied the um, adhesive glue, then I would just let it dry and not use your heat gun. So once the adhesive was nice and clear, I came in and I did cut the sheet down. I have like a 12 by 12 sheet, or actually it's probably even bigger, of the foil, but to make it more manageable, I cut it into these little pieces and I'm just moving around the cup and just applying the foil just kind of every which way, well not every which way, just like over that stretch and making sure to push it down so that I get nice coverage of that amazing leopard print um, on that stripe. Now, I did end up adding a, another little line of glue and adhesive at the top of the cup for um, a more another foil stripe. So you could see that thin stripe at the top. I just came in with the adhesive and applied more foil, but I didn't record it, so I apologize, but it was the exact same process. Um, I just let the adhesive dry before instead of using my heat gun and it worked a lot better. Now what I did is I grabbed a needle nose bottle that you can see here and that bottle is full of Mod Podge and what I'm doing is I am going over the glitter line designs in the water slide that we applied and just applying Mod Podge over that line. So this is just an added step. It is by no mean, means necessary, but I liked the added depth that it added to the design. So I'm just coming in and following that line around and then I'm using 14 karat gold from Bougie Glitter Boutique and just applying it over this line. So I used 14 karat gold, I think for two or three of the lines. And then I also came in with Fool's Gold, which is another 
beautiful gold glitter from Bougie Glitter Boutique and I went over those lines as well. So any of the gold stripes that you see here, I did go over with the glitter and I also added an additional line just because there was just a little too much green going on, but um, you can either follow the water slide design or just do whatever your heart desires and add the glitter in every, like anywhere you want. So once the glitter was applied, I just came in with a nice brush and it does not have to be like a fanned bristle brush like you see here, but I'm just getting off the excess glitter so that you don't have any kind of strays that like to adhere to that epoxy and mess up your design. Once I was happy with all of the glitter stripes, I let those dry for about, I'm gonna say four hours. Then I did spray seal these with Rust-Oleum 2X gloss spray paint. And then I moved into 20 milliliter coat of epoxy just to make sure that we have all the design elements nice and placed and intact before we move into the next steps of this design. I did end up going in with a second light coat of epoxy, which was another 10 milliliters for this cup and then I decided to really give it a good sanding so that we have a nice smooth surface for applying our HTV. So I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander and the sander I use I will list below because this thing is an absolute godsend. But what I'm doing is I'm holding my orbital in place and just rocking the cup back and forth to really make sure that I'm getting a nice surface to my cup but I'm also not creating any flat spots that would cause like wonkiness to the overall aesthetic of the cup so I'm just giving this a quick sanding knocking down any of the high parts um, and not digging out any of the low parts and then I came in and I washed it with Dawn dish soap let it dry and cut out all my decals and now it's time to apply them now I accidentally deleted the clip where I applied the decal but what I'm doing here is I'm taking a measuring tape and I marked the center and then that gold that you see on there I designed it to where the lucky charm offset which is the gold that you see there has a line through it to cover up the water slide seam but I folded the lucky charm words in half marked like kind of got that fold crease where the center of the decal was and then lined it up with the dot that I had put on the cup so I measured marked the center and then I folded just the words so not the kind of scrolly thing that you see at the end of lucky charm and then got it right in place where I wanted it and then came in with my hot iron and adhered it to the cup after that was done I did then came in with the um lucky charm or like the clover that goes in the middle of the design and adhered that directly over the first layer of HTV and made sure that it was nice and stuck before moving to the rest of the cup. So I'm going to show you how to apply the HTV with the other decals, but it's the exact same process that I did for the Lucky Charm decal. All you want to do with HTV is take the transfer tape and position the HTV vinyl in the way that you want it. You can pick it up, move it around as much as you want. And then I have this clover tool, which is um, what the iron is called. And I know it's kind of confusing because it's called clover as well. But you're just going to go over the HTV in the transfer tape with this clover tool. Now the clover tool is set to high because I needed the higher heat to really adhere these to the cup, but you're just going to go constantly go over the HTV in kind of a back and forth movement of the decal. And then I like to slowly lift up the transfer tape and see if the decal is adhered well enough to the cup before I move on. So you can see there, I just pulled up a little bit, saw that the decal was lifting, and then I came back in with the clover tool and just kind of made sure that it was more secured to the cup and you'll be able to see it as you move around with the different decals when the decal is actually really adhered to the cup because it will not pull up when you pull the transfer tape so make sure that any of the htv that you're applying is really well adhered and it does not move when you pull your transfer tape because then you know that you're ready to move on into the next step and that your htv is not going to go anywhere after I was happy with the placement, I came in with two coats of polyacrylic to make sure that all of the HTV was nice and secure in place, but also because normal Oracle 651 vinyl will not stick to glitter HTV. 
Ask me how I know I wasted way too much time on it. But what I did is I applied the first coat of the poly acrylic, let that dry for about two hours, came in with a second coat, let that dry for about two hours while spinning. And then I came in with the rest of the decal for the Lucky Charm. Once the poly acrylic coats were dry, it was time to apply our permanent Oracle black vinyl to the cup. Now, even though we did the coats of poly, it might have been better just to do a coat of epoxy after the HTV. I just did it because I was really worried about the cup being so thick because there are so many coats of epoxy. But because I chose to go the poly route, um, the vinyl didn't stick as well as it would have if it was epoxy. So completely do what your preference is. But what I'm doing is I am just slowly pulling up the transfer tape and making sure that that vinyl is nice and pushed down and adhered as well as possible to the design. Now, with the Oracle 651, I feel like it's super, super forgiving. So if something goes down and you're not happy with it, just use your X-Acto knife, lift it up and have it lay back down. If, even if you mess it up, you can cut another decal and get it into place, but really make sure that the placement is where you want it, that it looks really good because it does have such a huge impact on the overall aesthetic of your cup. So I'm taking my time, making sure everything is pushed down just the way I like it before I move into the charm section of this decal. Now, again, the reason why the charm is so close to the top of the cup with that kind of scrolliness underneath the M was because I chose to center my decal based upon the two primary words and not the scroll at the end of charm. If you did want to accommodate um, that scrolly feature of this decal, you could just fold it in half with the char like the scrolly piece being part of the measurement. But again, I'm just coming in and making sure that this decal is nice and pushed down, making sure that everything is adhered before moving on too quickly because it is a big part of the overall design of this cup and we don't want to mess it up. Once I was happy with the vinyl placement, I did spend about a good extra 20 minutes really pushing that vinyl down to where it was well adhered to the cup. And then I immediately moved in to the final coats of epoxy. This cup did need two final coats, the first coat being 15 milliliters, letting that dry for about six hours because I did use Artistry's two to one fast set epoxy. And then I came in with a second coat, which again was 15 milliliters. Same thing with Artistry's Fast Set Epoxy, and this baby was done. And here she is. I love St. Patrick's Day, and this cup makes me all sorts of excited to drink green beverages, have some corned beef and cabbage, and celebrate the festivities. All of the different design elements of this cup make it beautiful, and the techniques can be leveraged to create so many other tumbler possibilities. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I will be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Erin Gobra. Bye.